I'm Phil Ernest, and I'm in Pasadena hiking to Echo Mountain. On the hike today, I will visit a once thriving resort in the 1890s. I will also give you the history behind this bench that is on the trail, as well as take in some amazing views of the city below. To get to the trailhead from the 210 freeway in Pasadena, exit 26, which is Lake Avenue. Head north for 3.5 miles to the end of the road, and you will find street parking. The trailhead is on the right, just before the road turns sharply to the left and becomes East Loma Alta Drive. You have now arrived at the trailhead. This is what it looks like Cobb Estate. You can either enter to the right or to the left. For the first one-tenth of a mile, you'll be hiking on a paved walkway. Then, when the road turns north, continue straight on a dirt path, following the signs for Sam Merrill Trail. As you can see from this point, the hike is two and a half miles to Echo Mountain. After a few hundred feet, you will officially reach the start of the trail. Then set out up the trail, which angles north across the typically dry creek below Los Foros Canyon. On the east side of the creek, the switchbacks begin, about 2.5 miles of them. At the start of the hike, you will have a little shade but not much until you're in direct sunlight. At this point, I am now overlooking the city of Pasadena. Look how close the houses are below to the trailhead. The trail ascends at an aggressive grade, but never gets too steep over the 1400 foot climb. Views over Pasadena expand as you maneuver upside of Los Flores Canyon, past Chaparral and Spring Wild Flowers. A mile and a half up, the trail swings around the other side of the ridge for a brief glimpse into Rubio Canyon to the east. The next switchback guides you back to Los Flores side of the ridge beneath a string of power lines. When you see the power lines, you will know you are at the halfway point to the top. This bench is here to commemorate the memory of hiking leader Lee Tracy. On January 2017, 71-year-old Lee led a group of hikers on this trail as he had done on every Wednesday for the last 10 years. On his way back down the mountain, Lee slipped and fell 10 feet to his death. Rest in peace, Lee. You are sorely missed and not forgotten. Thank you for all the hikes you led us on over the years. They were truly appreciated. After 2.7 miles, Lower Sam Mariel Trail comes to a T-junction with Echo Mountain Trail. If you were to turn to the left, you would hike 0.8 miles up this trail to a junction with Mount Lowell Road at Cape of Good Hope, which was a scenic landmark on the Mount Lowell Railroad. But for this hike, I will turn to the right and continue hiking for 0.2 miles to the Echo Mountain ruins. And the first ruin I will encounter is an old rail car that was used to transport guests up the mountain. The resort and railway built by Thaddeus S. C. Lowell attracted over 3 million guests in its 40 years of operation, making it one of the most popular destinations in Southern California. Professor Lowell chose a fine spot for his resort. The sprawling vista that once drew guests from around the world is now free to hikers, and every bit as exceptional. Since this is a place you'll want to linger, there is a picnic area in the Pine Grove on the northwest side of the ruins, a peaceful spot for a sylvan picnic. A placard posted alongside the foundation offers this description of the resort. The world famous Echo Mountain House was completed in 1894. It was a beautifully shaped building, four stories high with 400 wing offering a southern exposure. A massive metal dome crowned the structure. The entire interior of the hotel was furnished in natural wood and had, in addition to 70 sleeping rooms, office space, social and recreational halls, a dining room, 
Curio Shop, Western Union Office, Bowling Alley, Billiard Room, Barber Shop, Shoe Shine Stand, and other facilities for the comfort of guests. The hotel cost $65,000, a vast sum at the time. Echo Mountain Trail ends at the foundation of the resort complex known as the White City. Remaining machinery and masonry are accompanied by numerous park-provided plaques that add history and scope to the setting. Still standing is the landing and steps where guests would exit White Chariots, the tram cars that delivered them from Rubio Canyon to Echo Mountain. The impressive inclined tram line has long disappeared, but the old route is visible below. Constructing a line on this steep slope is an impressive piece of engineering, even by today's standards. If you like this type of content and would like to see more of it, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, reach over and give this video a thumbs up as well. At this point, I will now walk up the steps to the resort and see what it looks like now. The California native plants have now taken over the foundation of what once was the White City. Taking a look at this yucca plant up close and personal. The resort built on Echo Mountain was one of the largest tourist draws in California. Thaddeus Lowell's resort, known as the White City, was perched at an elevation of 3,200 feet, overlooking the city of Pasadena and a grand stretch of Southern California. Now I will take a little stroll over to the reservoir. This is where the resort got all of its water from. As I look at the reservoir, the mountain behind it is Inspiration Point. That is a historic viewpoint that was built for guests of Echo Mountain and still delivers great panoramas. To hike to Inspiration Point from Echo Mountain, that is a two and a half mile hike. From the footprint of the resort, walk northeast to a strange looking relic. In an era before cell phones and walkie talkies, the echo phone could be used to shout messages across the mountain. I will now step up to the echo phone and give it a try. It is a rousing success as my booming message still resonates across the canyon. Now looking at a floor plan of what once was the White City. And here is an old picture of the White City back in its glory days. And now looking at the foundation of what once was the White City Resort. The resort was long ago destroyed by wildfires, leaving fascinating ruins for present-day visitors to explore. As you can see, the resort has expansive views that you no longer need reservations to enjoy, since the tram cars that delivered guests to the resort are long gone. It's up to you to hike the 5.8 miles with a 1,400 feet of elevation gain to see it for yourself. My overall impressions of Echo Mountain is very good. The upside is, it's close proximity to the city, so parking isn't an issue, since there is plenty of street parking available. Also, no fees or permit is required to hike the Sam Merrill Trail to Echo Mountain, or beyond that for that matter. The hike begins just outside the boundaries of Angeles National Forest, and because of that, dogs are welcome and bikes are also permitted. The downside of the hike is there isn't much shade on the trail at all, so you will definitely are going to be needing to bring your sunscreen, hat, and sunglasses if you plan on doing this hike during the day. As I make my way on down the mountain, I'd like to let you know I have other hiking videos that I have made in the area. Be sure to click on the link to enjoy those. I post a new video every week. Thank you for watching.